In 2001, Japanese scientists uncovered a secret hiding in our skin, a unique molecule called 2-non-enol, responsible for the scent we often associate with aging. Their findings not only confirmed that old age smell is real and measurable, but also sparked cultural debate and subtle stigma around the world. Yet behind the headlines lies a calm truth. Growing older changes our body chemistry in ways most of us never notice, touching everything from self-esteem to daily habits. So why do older people really smell different? And what does this reveal about the hidden biology of age? The answers will reshape how you think about the most human of changes. In a laboratory outside Tokyo, researchers at Shiseido set out to answer a simple but puzzling question. Why do older adults sometimes have a distinct scent? Their approach relied on headspace gas chromatography, mass spectrometry, a precise method for detecting trace chemicals in the air above a sample. Volunteers of different ages wore odorless cotton t-shirts for three nights, following a strict bathing routine to eliminate outside scents. When the fabric was analyzed, the team found a molecule that stood out, 2 non -e enol This compound appeared only in samples from people over the age of 40 and was entirely absent in younger participants. The results, published in April 2001, offered the first direct evidence that aging skin produces a unique volatile aldehyde. The discovery made the scent measurable for the first time, transforming what had been a vague social observation into a matter of scientific record. For the researchers, it was a breakthrough that revealed a hidden layer of human biology, one that could now be studied, discussed, and understood. The newly identified molecule quickly became more than just a scientific finding. In Japan, the term kareshu, literally scent of aging, entered public conversation almost overnight. Newspapers, TV programs, and health magazines introduced the word to millions, transforming a technical discovery into a household topic. The idea that a specific scent could be traced to a natural process of growing older sparked curiosity and, in some cases, concern. Kureshu was discussed openly, sometimes with humor, sometimes with anxiety, but always with a sense of inevitability. The Japanese media treated it as a normal, if slightly awkward, part of life, something to be understood rather than hidden. Across the Pacific, Western media paid less attention, and when the topic surfaced, it was often framed as a question of hygiene or personal care, not biology. While Japan embraced a new vocabulary to describe the phenomenon, other cultures hesitated to name it at all. The conversation had moved out of the lab and into everyday life, setting the stage for a deeper look at the chemistry behind the name. Sebaceous glands scattered across the skin play a quiet but essential role in shaping how our bodies smell. In youth and middle age, these glands produce a steady flow of sebum a complex oil blend that keeps skin supple and forms a natural barrier against the environment. By the time most people reach their 60s, this system begins to slow down. Dermatological studies show a marked drop in sebaceous activity after age 60, with less oil reaching the skin surface each year. But it's not just the quantity of oil that changes. The composition of skin lipids, the fatty acids and waxes that make up sebum, also shifts with age. Among these, omega-7 monounsaturated fatty acids such as palmitoleic acid and vaccinic acid start to accumulate. In younger skin, these molecules are balanced by a mix of other lipids and kept in check by a robust supply of antioxidants. As the body ages, natural antioxidant levels decline, leaving these omega-7 fatty acids more vulnerable to attack by oxygen molecules. When oxygen interacts with these unsaturated fats, a process called lipid peroxidation begins. This reaction breaks down the fatty acids, producing unstable byproducts. One of these byproducts is 2-non-enol, the compound identified in the Shiseido study. The shift is subtle at first, barely detectable in people under 40, then rising sharply in older adults. Laboratory tests confirm that 2-non-enol is only generated when omega-7 fatty acids undergo this oxidative breakdown and only in the presence of lipid peroxides. The change isn't uniform across the body. Regions rich in sebaceous glands like the nape of the neck 
and behind the ears show the highest concentrations of two non-enol. These sites become focal points for the new scent profile associated with aging. The process is gradual, shaped by the interplay between glandular slowdown, fatty acid buildup, and the skin's waning antioxidant shield. Each element in this cascade is natural, a quiet transformation happening beneath the surface, setting the stage for the more complex chemistry of aging body odor. On the surface of our skin, an invisible ecosystem is always at work. Trillions of bacteria, together known as the skin microbiome, live in harmony with us, shaping the scents we give off day to day. These microbes are not spread evenly. Instead, they cluster in certain regions, drawn by the oils and moisture our bodies naturally produce. Sebum-rich areas like the nape of the neck and the folds behind the ears act as hot spots. Here, the concentration of volatile molecules, including two non-enol, is higher than anywhere else on the body. These regions provide the perfect environment for both the chemical reactions and microbial activity that define the scent profile of aging skin. The skin's surface is far from uniform. Some areas are dry and sparsely populated by microbes, while others, such as the scalp, face, and upper back, are dense with sebaceous glands and teeming with bacterial life. In these oily zones, bacteria break down the complex lipids found in sebum, producing a range of compounds that contribute to body odor. As we age, shifts in the skin's chemistry, especially the rise in omega-7 fatty acids and the drop in antioxidants, change the balance of nutrients available to these microbes. This subtle shift encourages the growth of certain bacteria while discouraging others, altering the mix of scents released from the skin. Reactive oxygen species, or ROS, play a quiet but decisive role in this process. These unstable molecules produced in greater amounts as we age trigger lipid peroxidation in the skin's oils. The breakdown of omega-7 fatty acids by ROS not only generates two non-enol but also provides new substrates for microbial metabolism. The result is a local increase in distinctive aldehydes and other volatiles, especially in sebum-rich zones. Studies using biosniffer technology have mapped these emissions, confirming that the nape and behind-the-ear areas consistently register the highest levels of age-related odor compounds regardless of bathing habits or environmental factors. The pattern is clear. The scent of aging is not uniform across the body, but concentrated in specific anatomical hotspots shaped by the interplay of skin oils, oxidative chemistry, and microbial communities. This regional variation explains why some areas seem more noticeable than others, and why the experience of age-related body odor is so closely tied to biology rather than personal hygiene. Each person's scent map is unique influenced by genetics, environment, and the ever-changing population of microbes living on their skin. In controlled experiments, researchers set out to learn whether people can actually identify the scent of aging. At the Monell Chemical Senses Center, body odor samples were collected from volunteers in three age groups, young adults, middle-aged, and seniors. Each participant wore odorless underarm pads for five nights, following strict rules to avoid scented products and certain foods. The samples were then presented to a panel of young evaluators who had no information about the donors' ages. The results were surprising. When asked to sort the samples, the evaluators could correctly identify the scent of older adults nearly three-quarters of the time, an accuracy rate of 74%. Yet, when rating the intensity and pleasantness of the odors, the panel consistently described the scent from older adults as mild and largely neutral. In fact, these samples were rated as less intense and less unpleasant than those from younger or middle-aged donors. The so-called old-age smell turned out to be distinctive but not offensive. These findings challenge a common stereotype. Scientific evidence shows that while the scent of aging is real and detectable, it is not inherently foul or strong. The difference lies in subtle chemical cues, like the presence of two non-enol, that allow the human nose to distinguish age groups, much as it can with other social signals. The evaluator's ability to pick out older donors by scent alone highlights a natural biological marker of age, not a sign of poor hygiene or decline. 
By placing the evidence on record, these studies help separate fact from fiction. The scent linked to aging is a normal part of human variation, noticeable but far from the negative image often portrayed in popular culture. This scientific perspective lays the groundwork for understanding how perception, not just chemistry, shapes the conversation about body odor and aging. Maria, a retired teacher in her late 70s, remembers the first time someone made a comment about her scent. It was a small remark, tossed out at a family gathering, but it stayed with her for weeks. She began to wonder if others noticed too. Like many older adults, Maria found herself scanning store shelves lined with products promising to erase any trace of age. In Japan, entire aisles are dedicated to soaps and sprays marketed for karishu, kareishu, the so-called scent of aging. Advertisements often feature phrases like regain freshness or protect your confidence, quietly suggesting that age-related scent is something to be hidden or fixed. In Western countries, the message is less direct but no less powerful. Commercials for deodorants and body washes target older consumers with subtle warnings, hinting at embarrassment or social exclusion if they don't keep up. Even in care facilities, rules about odor can become part of daily life. Some homes encourage frequent showers or use air fresheners, not just for hygiene, but to manage the perception of age. The intention may be comfort, but for residents like Maria, the effect can be a quiet erosion of dignity. The underlying message is clear. Natural changes are something to be managed, not accepted. For many, this creates a cycle of anxiety and self-consciousness that is far more burdensome than the scent itself. The science shows that age-related body odor is mild and neutral, but the social response often carries a sharper sting. These cultural narratives and commercial messages shape how people feel about themselves as they age, turning a simple biological fact into a source of shame. As Maria learned, the challenge is not the scent, but the story told about it. Freshness and comfort start with a few gentle habits. Nothing extreme, nothing shameful. Regular washing with mild, non-drying cleansers helps remove the oils and bacteria that collect on the skin's surface. Dermatologists often recommend products with green tea or citrus extracts, which are naturally rich in antioxidants. These ingredients offer a subtle boost to the skin's defenses without stripping away moisture. Harsh soaps and vigorous scrubbing, on the other hand, can disrupt the skin's natural barrier, leading to dryness or irritation. Clothing choices matter too. Natural fibers like cotton or linen allow the skin to breathe and wick away moisture reducing the chance for odor-causing compounds to build up. Synthetic fabrics tend to trap sweat and oils, especially in areas where sebaceous glands are most active. Changing clothes and bed linens regularly, especially in warm weather, can make a noticeable difference in comfort. Diet plays a quiet but important role. Foods high in antioxidants such as berries, leafy greens, and nuts support the body's ability to manage oxidative stress the same process that leads to the formation of two non-enal. While no diet can erase the biological changes of aging, a balanced intake of fruits, vegetables, and healthy fats helps maintain skin health from within. Staying hydrated and limiting processed foods may also help keep the skin's chemistry in a steady state. Stress management is another subtle tool. Chronic stress increases the body's production of reactive oxygen species which accelerate the breakdown of skin lipids. Simple routines, like daily walks, moments of quiet, or gentle stretching, can help regulate stress and support overall well-being. These habits are not about chasing perfection or hiding signs of age. Instead, they offer practical ways to feel clean, confident, and at ease in one's own skin, whatever the year on the calendar. Scientists continue to probe the chemistry of aging skin, but the full story of age-related scent remains unwritten. One of the biggest questions centers on hormones. Their decline with age is clear. But how these changes drive the production of two non-enal and other odor compounds is still being mapped. Researchers suspect that shifts in estrogen and testosterone may alter the balance of fatty acids in the skin but no large-scale studies have tracked these changes over time. 
Most of what is known comes from cross-sectional snapshots, not from following individuals year after year. Without long-term tracking, it is impossible to say how a person's scent evolves across decades or what factors might speed up or slow down the process. The search for answers also extends to remedies. While antioxidant-rich diets and specialized cleansers are popular, there have been no rigorous clinical trials to confirm that these strategies reduce to non-enal in real-world settings. Traditional remedies, such as persimmon soap in Japan or neem baths in India, are widely used but remain largely untested by modern science. Researchers are calling for studies that compare these approaches head-to-head, -head, using sensitive tools like gas chromatography and biosniffer technology to measure even subtle changes. Another frontier is the role of environment and lifestyle. Sun exposure, air quality, medications, and even stress could influence the skin's chemistry, but their impact on age-related odor is not well understood. The effect of daily habits like diet, sleep, and exercise on the skin's volatile profile remains an open question. Scientists are also interested in the social side, how cultural attitudes, personal routines, and even marketing messages shape the way people experience and respond to these natural changes. As new tools and larger studies become available, researchers hope to untangle the complex pathways that connect hormones, skin oils, microbes, and the sense of aging. Each discovery adds another layer to the story, offering reassurance that these changes are a normal, evolving part of life. The future of this field is not about erasing age, but about understanding it. One molecule, one story, and one study at a time. In 2001, Shiseido researchers published the first scientific evidence linking the compound 2-non-enol to age-related changes in body odor. This discovery turned a long-standing curiosity into a measurable biological phenomenon, now recognized in both scientific journals and daily conversation. We know that shifts in skin lipids, hormone levels, and the skin's microbiome all contribute to this subtle scent, while perception studies show most people rate it as mild and neutral. Despite these advances, researchers have yet to fully map how diet, lifestyle, and long-term metabolic changes affect two non-enal levels as we age. What is clear, these changes are natural markers of growing older, not causes for shame. By understanding the science and supporting daily routines with gentle, evidence-based habits, individuals can approach aging with confidence. The facts show that age-related scent is a normal part of the human story, one best met with knowledge and dignity.